So um, I'll just introduce myself a little bit. My name is Nathan Porter. Um, I'm a recovering corporate drone. I worked in for about 10 years in enterprise software. And um, you know, it was a hard battle coming over kind of to the open source side until I actually saw the community. And then I was like, OK, I'm in. So um, it felt a lot less like work, you know? So um, I work, um, I have a couple of companies. Uh, WanaPixel is actually our company, and we have a product called Uku People. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm from Denver. So um, Denver is, you know, the destination for marijuana. Um, and everybody kind of teased us because we moved there in March about, oh, uh, I know why you're moving to Denver, you know. But <laughs> Um, so, and then a uh, uh, little side story, and we're building a house, and in the meantime, we're staying in an apartment while our house is being built. There's all these little kids running around, and there was this little six-year-old um, Latino kid came running up to us, and he's like, um, I know, or, or uh, something, about, like, our rent is going up because of you. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, everybody's moving here for the marijuana, including you, and that makes our rent go up. I was like, all right, sorry about that. <coughs> so anyway, so this is, um, here's a few people in my life. So uh, we have, I have a six-week-old daughter, my first daughter, and that's my wife and myself and our dog. And um, we do a lot of fun things with our local um, Tech for Good chapter, which is if you're involved in nonprofits, uh, to look up they meet on a monthly basis and talk about technology for um, nonprofits and that sort of thing. So. <coughs> Tech for good. Yeah. There's also uh, ones called uh, 501C Tech Clubs, which are um, sponsored by N10, um, based out of Washington, D.C. Um, Tech for good is, ba is uh, sponsored by Network, or Network for Good, which is a branch of TechSoup. Um, if you're not familiar with TechSoup, definitely check them out as well. So how many of you are uh, either you work, f okay, first of all, how many of you work in a nonprofit organization? Anyone? All right, one. You volunteer, okay. Vol volunteers work, but yeah, all right. Um, volunteer, okay, perfect, all right, awesome. A lot of volunteers involved in nonprofits, which is great. Um, how many of you are, you know, service providers to nonprofit organizations? You build websites for them. Can, okay, excellent. All right. So, what we're going to cover today is really relevant um, to basically going from a the advertising line on their budget to the operations, productivity, all that, um, which is a great bridge to kind of gap. Um, company WannaPixel has done work for a lot of cool companies um, and nonprofit organizations are doing a lot of um, <laughs> as well. So. Uh, okay, so before we get started, I like to take a picture with, picture with all the awesome people. Um, so if all the awesome people could move over to the other side of the room, <laughs> I'll take a picture with you guys. Yes, please stand. Yeah. I have a device. Uh, yay. <laughs> Sorry. My uh my open source Android phone is giving me trouble here. I'm going to give it like 10 more seconds and I'm about ready to. Ah, there we go. Maybe. Yeah. All right, you know what? <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to give up on that idea right now. Um, sorry about that. Maybe later. Um, Okay, so um, at the end, I would really love if there's any, um, you know, if you have
clients you want to kind of throw under the bus and be like, see, I told you this was, you needed to update your website, whatever. Or if it was your own um, and you did a really great job on it, I would love to look at it later. If you want to volunteer a website or your own website for us to take a look at, it would be awesome. All right, so we're going to cover a couple of categories. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to cover the content targeting. It just depends on the audience here, what your interests are. Um, we'll see when we get there. Um, but donations, constituents, and then content targeting. So a couple statistics, and these are really um, good to know because you may know a plugin or a tool that um, handles donations, or you may um, you know know that best practice is something, but if you don't have something to back it up to be able to tell people this is why you should do this or shouldn't do that, then it can be you know a challenge and you can download these slides and show them to your clients later if you want to. So does online matter for fundraising? Um, you know, a lot of people um, talk to me about their email campaigns and how important they are for fundraising, which is, I agree, they're great, they're important for engagement. But statistically, um, $17 is raised for every 1,000 fundraising emails sent. So that's not a very great conversion rate. Um, a recent study showed that while overall giving increased 4.9% year over year, online giving increased 13.5% in the same time period, which basically goes to show that online giving is growing faster than overall giving. So who is really giving to these nonprofit organizations? 72% um, of online giving comes from individuals. 95% of households give $3,000 or more annually. Um, and 20% of giving occurs in December. So, um, you know, these are pretty impressive statistics if you think about it. Um, and we have a lot of nonprofit organizations that are grant funded or they're funded by a foundation and that kind of thing. And if that's where a majority of their funding is coming from, um, they're, they probably don't have a, um, a solid platform, I guess, for fundraising from individuals, which is really key to long term. So does mobile matter? We all know that it does. Um, but mobile response and giving pages double giving on mobile devices kind of a no-brainer, right? If you can't see the form, then you're not going to give, right? 84% um, of online giving pages were not optimized for mobile in 2014. There's a big opportunity out there. 63% um, of donors want to know how their gift will be used. This is a really big one because when someone comes to a donation page and they're not re-engaged, um, about the mission of the organization, then their likelihood of bouncing is much higher. 75% of donors spend less than two hours researching the organization they give. So we get a lot of arguments from nonprofits saying, oh, uh, you know, there's, you know, the three second rule doesn't apply to us for engagement. You, know, you have three seconds to capture someone's attention when they come to your website. Um, and that's just simply not true. Uh, people always, uh, people often um, impulse give based on those sort of things. So 34% increase in conversion rate from responsive donation pages. So if somebody's giving you a hard time about, um, about you know, you wanting to create a responsive tool for them, like it's not going to pay off, it's not worth it, then that's a great statistic to have. I'm just going to turn this off. All right, so one of the largest missed opportunities in online fundraising is not keeping your audience on your website um, where they can continue to be engaged. So the minute that you push them to a third-party donation page, your, your chance of losing them is much, much higher. Um, and I'll show you some statistics on that. So um, in Colorado, um, we have a local foundation that um, you know, tries to feel, feel good sort of thing. And basically they do offer some benefit in the fact that they have a giving day in Denver 
um, and they run campaigns for all these organizations for free, which is great. But the downfall is that these organizations start using them as a donation platform. So when people click donate, they're leaving their website, their branded website with all their content, and they're going over to this other non-branded website, um, similar to something like PayPal, where you put a PayPal button in, you click on it, and off you go. So what does that translate into? NP Engage says 70% um, is the bounce rate for third-party non-branded donation pages. And think about it. If you're, yes? Um, that's a good question. I, um, usually, it means they come to the page and they leave within, I think it's 20 seconds. So are you but I don't know what this study okay. used. Um, definitely, they, they hit the page and didn't um, complete the transaction. So at least I know that. Um, the, um, so, so that if you think about it, when you're going to an organization to give, that big donate button, which is always like prominent, um, it be, it's just human nature, you're gonna click on it, right? But you haven't made a commitment to give at that point, right? You're curious. When you get to that page and it looks nothing like the organization, there's no information on it about the organization, there's no, you know, why you should give, you're gonna leave, right? And as you, and you probably all know, as soon as you, someone bounces from your page, your chance to re-engage them is almost zero. So, um, this study was very interesting. Um, so runningahead.com was a case study that was done, um, and they had a non-responsive, non-branded donation page that was a third-party donation page. Their bounce rate was around 54% with that. They went to an on-site designed and branded no donation page, and in the six-month period after, their bounce rate off that page was less than 1%. So huge, huge difference. So here's some math. Um, if your donation page traffic was 5,000 monthly visitors, and your third-party bounce rate, if you had a third-party donation page was 50%, which is about what running ahead done. Um, and to be generous, your on-site branded bounce page was 5%, or your on-site br branded page bounce was 5%, and your average donation was $10, which is probably a good average. Um, if you were using the third-party site, your monthly giving would be around 25000 If you were using an on-site branded site, your monthly giving would be 47500 So um, that's a pretty significant difference. And, you know, when um, we have this conversation all the time, people come to us and say, well, you know, we really want to redo our website and we want somebody to do it for us. Um, we're thinking maybe like one of the volunteer's sons could maybe do that. And he knows some stuff about WordPress, whatever. And um, if you don't have, you know, this kind of strategic knowledge behind it, these kind of opportunities are what get missed. So are you willing to risk, you know, 20 whatever thousand dollars a month in additional giving to save, you know, three grand on your website, 10 grand on your website, whatever it is. All right, so recurring donations, another really um, interesting and important statistic. Um, recurring donors give 42% more annually. And recurring donations are, an, are often um, an impulse decision as well. More so, surprisingly, than single gifts, like one-time gifts. And the reason for that is because often the ask is smaller. So would you be more comfortable committing to $10 a month or to $100 right now? So it's definitely valuable. So for WordPress, there's a lot of different options, a few different options, I should say, for, for donations. Um, a lot of the form voting tools have 
payment gateways built in, like Gravity Forms, like Ninja Forms, those kind of things. And you can use those for donations, um, and they work fairly well. Um, however, there's a new tool that has come out in the last year called Give. Hands down, absolutely, like, don't you ever use anything else. Give is built for donation pages. Um, you don't have to make it work. And you can do things like um, campaigns with goals. So um, let's say that you're doing a specific ask, like for the month of December, we want to raise a year-end giving goal of $10,000, right? And that can have um, you know, a goal slider there that shows as people give, like, yay, we're halfway there. The green bar is you know, getting higher. So those sort of things visually are, are great for engaging people like that. So <laughs> Give has a, a bunch of um, add-ons. These are just a few. Um, they, are, they have um, a MailChimp integration. So if you use MailChimp for your um, uh, for your organization, they have several other um, email marketing integrations as well. So if you use uh, some of the others, you could definitely check that out. Um, Authorize.net, PayPal, Stripe, um, they have been working on recurring donations, which um, handles things very, very elegantly compared to a lot of recurring donations. It just allows you to manage everything from your website instead of having to go to that payment gateway to um, manage it. So if somebody comes and says, hey, I want to cancel my recurring donation, you don't have to go to that payment gateway to, to manage that piece of it. Um, so th their, their um, donation forms are very flexible. You can place them in a sidebar. You can place them you know, anywhere in your page as a short code um, and build your content around it. And it just ma it works beautifully. Um, so here's an example of a donation page. A couple things I'd like to point out here is that um, uh, you know, you have the title, but then here's some buttons for different gift amounts, and each button sort of has a label on it. So these say like happiness gardener, software and engineer, creator of words, and this is for um, the uh, girls who code, I think, um, or girl developer. I'm not sure which one, but anyway, um, and so that kind of ties back to people want to know what they're giving to. If you kind of give some kind of a label, like, oh, this gift is g could go towards something like this, it makes people feel good about their gift. Um, and then when you click Donate, um, uh, either you could have several options for the payment fields. So you can have it come up in a modal window, which um, is kind of nice because you're not confusing them with all the payment options right on that page. It can pop up after. It can expand down the payment fields, or you can include them on the page if you're choosing. So highly recommend it. It's completely free. Um, the add-ons are paid, but they're very inexpensive. So um, you could go download Give, with use it with PayPal, and not pay anything to, 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 to use it. So very, very great. And their um, support team is great. Um, if you ever have any questions, you can reach right out to them. Their documentation is excellent. So if you don't be afraid that, you know, maybe I don't know technically how to set this up or whatever, they'll, they can um, uh, walk you right through it. So, um, so they, they integrate with PayPal um, with the various different packages. Right, so the, the PayPal standard always goes to PayPal to process. Um, PayPal, um, uh, whatever, their business or professional um, level allows you to process transactions on your website. Stripe processes transactions on your website, authorize.net. So, yeah. Any? What's that? Um, no, PayPal. Um, PayPal charges their standard transaction fee, but that's it for that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, PayPal for, yeah. Yeah. 
Any questions about um, Give for donations? It's beautiful. It's easy. It's easy to understand, easy to use. It's wonderful. Um, and you know, th and there hasn't no, there hasn't really been anything like this available prior to this year. Um, nonprofits love it. All right, so let's talk about constituents. So um, this is a I don't know how you know much people use this word in their daily language. Um, I find it kind of awkward and whatever, but it's kind of a way that technical people like to identify everyone, right? So it's like donors, volunteers, you know, any of your tribe, uh, you know, in, uh, for your nonprofit organization. Um, so here's a couple of things. Um, when you're thinking about constituents and when you're thinking about tracking constituents and interactions with constituents, um, you really want to think through, well, who is that tribe? Um, who, what is a profile of, you know, what are people look like to market to them and that kind of thing. So who is your primary audience? Donors, volunteers, services. Um, who is your secondary audience and who is your um, tertiary audience? So once you've kind of outlined that, it kind of helps you to identify all right, so here's the things I should know about these people, and that's where it comes into planning for tracking those in interactions and engagements with constituents. So defining your audience, a um, couple things that some people think about are, are you targeting geographically? Um, is this important that we target people separately in Las Vegas versus San Francisco or Los Angeles, whatever? Um, are you targeting by language? So are we... Um, trying to, you know, um, meet people where they are in terms of their primary language. Um, income, interests, political party, relationship status, behavioral habits, education levels, connections. So all of these are kind of ways that you may want to track in order to target people more, more specifically and really um, show them that you care in the sense that you know who they are and you, you know, are speaking to them directly. So here's a couple of things that you should consider. If, the, if you fall or your client falls into this category, you may need a constituent relationship manager. Uh, so one, you use Excel to keep track of your contact list, event participants, and that other thing you forgot about. And who knows where that Excel is. Um, all right, the only shared contact list you have is MailChimp. Gmail or constant contact or all of the above, most likely. Last year when you did your fundraising drive, a major donor got called twice in the same day by two different people. It's no longer a major donor. And this <laughs> has happened to several of our clients, I'll tell you that right now. Um, when you talk to someone on the phone and you have no idea what their relationship is to your organization, You don't know what your donations were last week because your accounting person only works on Fridays and they haven't entered the PayPal stuff yet. I'll call you back. So there's a few different CRM tools for WordPress. Some of them are nonprofit oriented. Some of them are generic, but they work well for nonprofit organizations. So um, a few of them, uh, one is Uku People. That's, that's the one that we've helped to create, Civi CRM. We also helped to create. Um, Presspoint is another uh, one that's been around for a little while with uh, WordPress. And really looking at these three tools, they all kind of have their pros and cons. Um, Presspoint and Civi CRM are very complex to set up and use and that kind of thing. But they do give you the ability to um, really kind of um, more closely sort of do custom reporting and targeting and that kind of thing. Um, don't recommend them for, um, you know, anyone under an advanced user to, to set up and use. Um, Uku People is very simple to use, and that's what we designed it for. Um, so Uku People, um, I'll go over a little bit of information about it. We have an integration with Gravity Forms, so any kind of Gravity Forms that you capture, whether it's an event registration, whether it's a survey, post-event, 
contact form, whatever, you can capture that information back into your CRM. So you, on that contact, can see, oh, this person submitted a contact form two weeks ago, and this week they gave us a donation, whatever. Um, the other integration is Give, which we just talked about. So when someone donates on your site, it shows up in your CRM. Um, MailChimp and Import-Export. And coming soon is Google Apps. And Google Apps um, integration is going to start as MVP, Minimum Viable Products. And that will be um, uh, basically pushing your calendar, your upcoming activities to your calendar in Google Apps. So um, we'll dig in a little bit. All right, so on your dashboard, in your WordPress dashboard, um, Uku people actually add three dashlets, but only two are pictured here. Um, one is my favorites, and that's specific to the logged in user. So you can go through and say, hey, this person is my favorite. I want to make sure that they show up here on the dashboard. My activities, um, which shows anything that's assigned to you that is not completed. And it is sorted in order of, you know, newest or now to the future, basically. Um, and then the third one, which, not which is not pictured here, is a um, uh, entry form for adding a touch point. So I want to add a phone call with this person, and here are the details. Add. Easy. Um, and then this is actually um, gives um, a dashlet, which is really cool. It kind of gives you a summary of your giving today, this month, this week, this year. Um, and then, so on the contact um, dashboard, uh, this is for an individual contact. You have all of your information, email address, tags. Um, you have a, um, a summary of giving. So this kind of also shows you by individual what their gifts have been year to date, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, I might dig into that a little bit more. Um, let me just ask you guys a little, are you, uh, with content marketing, what we're really looking at here primarily is looking at how to target um, people geographically. So if you have an, uh, a national, international um, organization, it would be things like, I want to automatically give this visitor the site in their language with news that's relevant to them in their city. Interested in seeing that? Okay. All right, so let's take a look. So content marketing, but first content. So anybody in this room probably you know, understands the challenge of getting quality original content from your clients. But that's step one, and it's not what we're here to talk about today. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nope. So a couple things to think about. Quality is much more important than quantity. Um, you know, this is, you know, my experience and a lot of statistics back this up. It's much more important that people focus on the quality of the content on their website rather than posting every day or every whatever. Um, quality is much more important. Google knows your voice. So if you're writing content for your organization, don't pick some random person here and there on Fiverr or whatever to, to write stuff for you. Google, un Google will recognize the voice of people who are writing on the site and they'll give more, um, you know, more credit to people who they sound the same throughout the, the content. So um, plan it for the year. Don't, you know, don't piecemeal this and don't, write about what you feel like today. Today I felt like I, sh you know, had a hard time getting up, so I should write about that today. Think about who your audience is. Be very intentional about consistency of content and that kind of thing. Who's going to write it? What, what time? Are, you know, when are they going to write it? That kind of thing. Plan it for your target audiences. So back to that primary, secondary, tertiary audiences. Think about who they are, who you're targeting, and what speaks to them. This is not for you, it's for them. Don't chase trends. So 
just because there was something that happened in Nepal, if it has nothing to do with your organization, don't write about it. Just because Donald Trump said something stupid at a you know, convention, if it has nothing to do with your organization, don't write about it. Think about what is relevant to your audience. Um, focus on uh, niche topics. So um, this is things that not everybody else is writing about. So think about, you know, if you're probably there's a reason that your organization is still, you know, being funded, is still in business, is probably because there's not a hundred other organizations doing exactly what you're doing. Write about that. And don't worry about SEO. Do not spend days, you know, weeks going through and worrying about optimizing all the little things or trying to figure out what keywords you should be using, all that. Just focus on writing quality content. Couple tools for doing these things. Um, CoSchedule is a great tool for planning for the year and assigning content to people. And it works within the WordPress dashboard. So um, you'll have access to the CoSchedule calendar and you can go through the process of here's first draft, this editor has reviewed it, now plan it or schedule it to be published on this day. And when it publishes, send it to social media. So, so CoSchedule is great for kind of managing that whole process start to finish. It is a um, paid subscription, but um, it's very reasonable depending on the size of your organization. Um, another one that's a little bit more pricey, and so maybe if you have a larger organization, it's definitely worth considering, is Scribe from Copyblogger. And what Scribe does is it analyzes the quality and targeting of your content. So you tell it ahead of time, here's our audience, here's the kind of things that we typically write about, that kind of thing. It'll check for grammar, it'll check for um, you know, keyword density, it will check for you know, you know, kind of the quality of the sentence structure. Is this written for the grade level that you're targeting, blah, blah, blah. So it does all of that really well and it's a great tool for that. So geo-targeted content. Who should geo-target? Who should use geo-targeted content? International organizations. So we have um, one organization in particular that's based in um, the Netherlands, I think. And they um, have 2,500 journalists in like 50 countries, something like that. And their whole target or whole goal is um, reporting on underreported stories. So for them, this is really important because they are in 50 countries and they are trying to serve all these different people with this content that's unique to their local issues, that kind of thing. Um, national organizations, statewide organizations can even use this. So what's happening in the southern part of the state may be different from what's happening in the northern part of the state, whatever. Um, and then multilingual organizations. So if you're serving different languages. Couple of um, WordPress tools, and this is not really um, sort of uh, which one wins, kind of. They're used differently. So VWO, Visual Website Optimizer, is a third party tool that has a Word, WordPress plugin. And it allows you to build profiles and I'll show you some more on that later. Um, Flytonic is a, uh, creates a plugin that allows you to um, geo-target content. And so what that means, and when you use something like this, be very cautious, test a lot. Um, buy the pro integration because um, what can happen is if you download the free version and their geo-targeting, like IP tables are out of date, it may, people may get an unexpected result, right? So um, it works well for major cities. So let's say uh, we want to say, you know, good morning Houston, right? Or good morning, you know, Las Vegas, whatever. Um, you can put that geotarget shortcode in your content to say, if it's here, show this text. If it's here, show this text. So it kind of on a granular level gives you that control. Um, Geo redirect is really 
pretty simple and basically let's say you have a multi-site with multiple different languages uh, which is what uh, Global Voice is, the, um, the journalism uh, agency or organization has. Um, because, and the reason they've decided to go with a multi-site with a language, a site per language, is because the content is so different. Because it's different stories, it's, it's di everything's different. So based on the IP address of the visitor, it sends them to the correct language for that country. So that's, that's a great one for that. So looking at uh, Visual Web Site Optimizer, this is the dashboard, and you can kind of configure it as you um, choose. Um, it does a number of different things. It allows you to do multivariant testing. So if you, say, have eight or ten different versions of your home page, you want to see which one's converting more, um, you can use this to test that. Um, it allows you to create profiles. So here's some examples. So this user, if he, if, if it's um, you know a female from France, using Windows and Google has a Google Plus account, show them this version of the website. If it's a male from Italy using a Mac and has a Facebook account, show them this version. So if you you can get really, um, yeah, you can get really granular. You can get very targeted to different things, and um, it works really well. Yes, yeah. Um, they have different packages. Yeah. Right. Or, so here's the thing. Um, if any, uh, well, anyway, yeah. But Facebook, if they have an integration with Facebook, um, and you even use the same email address for your um, for your user account, it can tell that. Or on their network of sites, have logged in somewhere, and it knows that IP address. So it's a monthly cost. Um, I believe they start around a hundred dollars, something like that. Um, yeah. We have a agency package, so I don't look at the. <laughs> but um, yeah. So yeah, but it's a very full feature tool, and, it, and again, it's third party, but it integrates with WordPress. So um, that's just a quick overview, and probably a lot of these tools are something that you could dig into a lot more deeply. Um, there's a lot of more information, tutorials and things like that out there around these topics. Um, whatever you do, um, I'll just, if you're selling to an uh, organization and they come to you for a specific purpose, maybe don't try to sell them all this at once. Um, but it's great to know as you move along and they're ready and more comfortable like to, to move them to the next level. Any questions? Yeah, so um, all of, pretty much all of our um, end user work that we do is nonprofit organizations. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, I do actually. Um, that is a great, you know, option for nonprofits. Google AdWords. The thing that you have to remember, though, is what are they, what are they going to? So if you don't rank somewhat o organically right. first, then you're throwing the money away. If you are, 
if you are if you have a great organic reach and people are engaging with your content already and you use that Google grant to accelerate it then it's a great benefit but if you're sending them to something that's crap and nobody cares about the bounce rates 80% then you you're have a very poor foundation to start from It, okay. So here, here's. Yeah. Well, when it comes, so um, we do have a so in our tech for good, you know, great whatever. They have presentations on. Hey, well, here's Google AdWords, and you can apply for these grants. A lot of our clients come, or a lot of people come to us and say, Hey, w show us how to use this. And we have to go back to square one and say, it's not going to benefit you right now because what you have is not good. So we start from square one. We want to build up and prove an organic audience before we even go there. Because we're going to waste a ton of time setting up all these ads, you know, trying to think of keywords and all that stuff when we don't even know why people would even come to our site to start with. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, just a general question because you know, of course, the best is fascinating. Uh, I've got a rather exhausted view of all the topics, both from my understanding. Okay. Yeah. And then I explained to my experience that it was totally incapable of intellectually understanding what you're trying to describe to us. <laughs> <laughs> and it was incapable <laughs> to <laughs> that you were you know, that line <laughs> of political, you know, so I, I've got to be honest with you, both but my experience might be totally disjointed. Yeah. So, yeah, so your question is basically um, a lot of nonprofits that you've interacted with, you don't, you know, they don't have the technical know how or experience to, to, to even look and understand this stuff. Yeah. So, so that's a, um, you know, the statistics about fundraising, um, I think, are, are not technical, right? So, those are things everybody, every nonprofit that I've ever met, their, you know, their goals are how do we increase our fundraising, and you know how do we create engagement online? Because a lot of times those are metrics that they raise money on, I guess. But so to answer your question, a lot of these tools are very available to to smaller organizations, right? Um, the work we do um, is a little different. I mean, we work with organizations that are. 50 to 200 million in revenue. That's that's our range. F 50 to 200 million in revenue. Oh, right. Yeah. So um, so yeah. So and so we don't necessarily use these tools for those organizations um, always. Sometimes we do. Um, you know. So it's a little bit of a different animal. But these are this these are tools and things that we've built kind of to serve organizations starting up. One great thing though that you can actually take advantage of with smaller organizations in presenting to them is a lot of them have a lot of turnover and so for them to have a stable partner for their technology that kind of goes above and beyond whatever turnover they have is really valuable to them because a lot of times they're starting from zero every time that ED changes or every time that volunteer changes.
can happen, yeah. Yeah, yep. Either people have been there forever or they've been there for a year, yeah. Yeah, how do I do that? Yeah. And my board is not. Yeah. So So whatever you do, you know, don't aim for perfection, all right? Push for, you know, if you go into an engagement like this, talk from the beginning about making this a long term. Like this should not be talked about as a single project, right? You should be their technology partner long term. And so start here, iterate, move forward, keep continuing improving. Uku people, yeah. Our company is, yeah. Yep. May of this year, yep. Absolutely. Well, as an example, um, so Civi CRM is the other tool that we started 10 years ago. Um, Civi CRM now has 10,000 organizations using it, um, including the Wikipedia Foundation, Amnesty International. So, so, um, so you know, we have the same commitment to this. Uh, we're not making money on it. It's not our money maker, but it's the way we kind of give back to the community.